Welcome back students. I wanted to give you a little bit of a preview of the app that we're going to create. It's an app that will essentially allow us to use the phone like a GPS device to collect data in the field. And this is an HTML5 web application and that has some implications. There are some things that you can't do like you could do if you wrote an actual native app for the Android or iOS, but it also has a lot of advantages, and one of those is that if you've taken my series of courses on WebGIS applications, you already know how to write HTML web maps, and this is just a variation of that. But a couple things I wanted to point out. One is that we can set things up so that it appears just like an app on your phone. You don't have to actually start up your browser or anything like that. You can just click on an icon and you could provide an image for this icon as well. I don't have any right now, but if I click on this, the other thing I want you to notice is that this app is part of the content management system that we developed and have been using over the past couple courses. And that means that a person has to be logged in to our content management system to use this application. If they're not, they won't have access to it. And that's important because when we collect data, we don't want to allow just any old person who happens to come across our app on the internet to have access to our GIS data. But if I log in to the content management system, I have access to all the web pages that are part of that system. And so I'm going to go down to lecture 57. And if you sign up for my course, you'll have access to these different points throughout the course. So you can try out the web application that we've been developing on your own, if you don't have your own web server that you can load the application to. So this is the basic framework of the app. We have several different background layers that we can show, like imagery or an outdoors map that shows a lot of information about trails and things like that. We have a measure tool, we have zoom tools, things that we've seen before. And here at the top of the screen, we have some information about the app. This is the current accuracy that's being reported, and it's not that great right now because I'm buried deep in my office, but you can see it says plus or minus 26 meters. And over here, we have some information about how long it's been since we had a fix. The first number is how long since it's had a valid location. And the second number is how long since it's reported that information to the info screen or later breadcrumb. And so let's look at the info screen first. Here we can see information about our current position, the previous position, and then the difference between the current position and the previous position. And so that includes things like how far you've moved, the direction you've been moving, the change in altitude, the change in time between these two positions, your speed, and the rate at which the altitude is changing, and things like that. And it also has information about who we're logged in as. And at any time, I can always click this button to go back to the map. We have a settings menu that has some settings that we can change, auto locate. When that's on, it will follow you automatically. And you can also change the interval at which it follows you. So right now it's turned on in three seconds. So this little blue circle is always gonna show your location within three seconds at the center of the screen. So the screen will basically follow you as you move. I can't demonstrate that now because Again, I'm in my office, I'm not moving. But if you look closely, you can see this moves around a little bit, changes size and things like that. Another feature that's not that's not currently on, I just turned it on when I moved it to five seconds, is breadcrumbs. And it's called breadcrumbs after the fairy tale story of the kids who were walking in the woods and they left a trail of breadcrumbs so they could find their way back. And of course, the breadcrumbs got eaten by birds and they got hopelessly lost and there was probably a witch involved, etc., etc. But these are electronic breadcrumbs, and it's the green dots that you see. If we were moving, it would be showing our location every five seconds. And that's just some basic GPS functionality if you want to keep track of where you've been throughout the day. And with this button, you can see the list of breadcrumbs. You can see at what time you were at a certain spot. And for each breadcrumbs, you can see the distance and bearing between the previous. And at the end of the list, you can see the total distance that you've traveled. And any one of these breadcrumbs you can search for. So if you want to know where you were at a certain time of the day, you can search and go back. And again, it's not very interesting because I'm not moving. But in this picture, you can see that it tracks very closely as I was running around my little three kilometer running loop in Chapultepec Park. And keep in mind, this is the same kind of thing that you would get if you were collecting a line in streaming mode, which we'll talk about in a bit. 
And then there's some other things in the settings menu. You can set an accuracy filter. So if you don't want to record points or consider points where the reported accuracy is more than a specified distance, you can set that. And you can also set the streaming interval at which points are collected when you're collecting data in stream mode. And stream mode is kind of like breadcrumbs, except for you're specifically saying that you want to collect a line or a polygon by collecting a point every so often as you walk around. And then we have a button that'll take us back to the content management system if you're done with the app, if you want to log out or something like that. Now the main functionality is going to be working with data in a PostGIS database. And so this is our layers button. When we click it, it shows we have three layers that we can access. We have a generic point layer, a generic line layer, and a generic poly layer. And these are just simple layers. But if we want to add data to one of these layers, we can click the plus symbol. So if I want to collect a generic point, I'll click the plus symbol in front of the generic point layer, and I can add some data, the name, a description. It automatically comes up with the location where you are. You can also collect a point by averaging over a specified period of time. You can collect a point in screen capture mode. For instance, if I move the map underneath these crosshairs, I can collect a point that's right underneath that crosshairs by coming up and clicking the stop button. And there I have the location of that point. And I'll just call it test. And then I'll click insert. And the point's been added. Now another thing I can do with these layers is I can list out all the features in the layer. And so there's a point that we just collected. I can click this button to search for it. I can also edit it or delete it. And another thing that's really cool is I can navigate to it. So if I click this button, then I'm shown a dashed line from my current location to the location I'm navigating to. And it also shows a distance and direction. So as I'm walking along, I can move that direction and I'll end up getting to the point that I was navigating to. And that's really useful. And there's some other buttons for refreshing your data from PostGIS, or you can actually download the data locally. So if I want to download this file on my phone, and then I could email it to someone and open it up in QGIS, that's possible. Now one thing, because the app knows who I am because I'm logged in, I only see the data that I've collected. If somebody else is using the same app in some other area, or even in the same area, I don't have access to their data. And we have these same options available for lines and polygons. With lines, we have two options. We can either stream the data, so it just collects points at a specified interval as we walk along. And we can pause that and start it up again. And when we're in stream collection mode, if we hit this points list, we see the points that are going to form the line or polygon that we're collecting. And if I go back to the map, I can either force it to collect a vertice in a certain location. So maybe you have it set to collect a location once a minute, but you're going to turn the corner in a block and you want to force it to collect a vertex on that corner. You can do that with this button. And when you're done collecting locations, you can hit the stop button. And then we have the GeoJSON format of the points that you just collected that we can submit to the database. And then the other method is vertex mode. In vertex mode, you're not collecting data automatically every so often as you walk along, but you get to choose specifically where you want to collect those points. So as you're walking along, you can either collect a point at the center of the screen underneath these crosshairs, or you can collect a point at your current location using this GPS marker device. And of course, you can still see the points in the point list. And when you're done, you can click the stop button and give it a name and insert it into the database. And so there's a line that we just created. And so this is the basic functionality of the app that we're going to create. And after we get to this point, we'll add the ability to use the app offline when you don't have a mobile connection. Because right now, the app is assuming that there's a internet connection, that you have a cellular data connection, so you can connect directly to your PostGIS database and retrieve data, collect data, edit data, etc. But before the course is over, we'll have the ability to use this and do all of that stuff completely offline. And then finally, we'll add some other layers in here. If you followed my last course, if you followed my series of courses, you'll be familiar with this environmental data set that I've been using with as raptors and eagles and burring owl habitat. And the real power of writing these things 
on your own, besides the fact that it can save you a, a lot of money because there's no charge for using this app, there's no monthly subscription or per user fees or anything like that. But the real power is that you can develop an app that'll do pretty much anything that you want. So we'll add a layer for collecting a Raptor Nest location and that'll include the ability to do things like add a new raptor survey to an existing nest or add a new nest and when you add a new nest it'll automatically tell you which of the linear features that that nest is going to impact and automatically construct an email that you can send to your project manager from the field to let him know right away that you found a new nest and which areas that it's going to impact and things like that. You'll even be able to take a picture with your phone and that picture will be available to anyone who has access to this application because the picture that you take will get saved automatically to the server and so that will be available to anyone who you decide to make it available to. Those pictures could also be tied to a specific nest so that when you search for the nest on the app you'll have the ability to see pictures of that nest as well. And the other real powerful thing about this approach to mobile data collection apps is that this data is live. As soon as we collect it, it's in our PostGIS database and our project manager or maybe even the client can have immediate access to the data that we've collected. And that's pretty cool. There's almost no limit to what you could potentially do. You could have your current location being updated so people in the office can see it. Or you could set up a messaging system so they can send you messages directly in the app. There's really no limit on what you can do. If you can imagine it, you can do it. And you don't have to dig through somebody else's code or modify somebody else's code in their non-programming solution because you know how to program. And so you can just do it yourself. So thanks for listening. And in the next lecture, we'll get started building this app. And we'll see you then.